Have you ever wished that you could easily edit your dull, boring photos to become beautiful masterpieces but just sliding a few sliders and creating a few masks? Well, you are at the right place, my friend. For the last seven years of my life, I've been editing photos on almost a daily basis. And in this video, I'm going to share with you 15 game-changing Lightroom tricks that will not only simplify your workflow, but also add that professional touch to your images. I'm talking tricks that most amateurs haven't even heard of. And by the way, the last one, it absolutely blew my mind the first time I heard about it. All right, so the first tip is something that I often like to do when I first open up Lightroom, and it is this here. So in the basic tab up here, you can press Command U, and Lightroom will automatically make the exposure adjustments for you. You can also click here. If you go back, you can also click this auto button right here. Now, this is by no means like a finished product, but in my opinion, this is a nice starting point. And this often I do and see what Lightroom like, how Lightroom will expose it. Really much appreciate that. And then number two is something that is so silly that I did a new earlier, but it's so good. I mean, it's also extremely basic, but you can actually take here and drag this here and make it bigger. What this does, it makes all of them sliders like bigger, so you have more wiggle room and it's just easier to be precise. This here, my friends, ugh. I mean, it's this small little tip that makes a big difference. Now, tip number three, my friends, is also here in the exposure tab, the basic correction, and it is also like this. So, if you hold in Alt on your keyboard and drag any one of these sliders, it will show you when you are clipping. So basically, let us let me show you here in the exposure tab. If we drag it up, Lightroom will show you with this white where you're like going too much in the white direction and it's just you blowing out the highlights. You see this? So if I show you here, this is obviously too uh, bright. Another thing I also like to do here is to press J on my keyboard. It will activate both the darks here and the highlights. You can also just press here if you want. And then when you're sliding all of these sliders, it will tell you when you're clipping. So if it goes to go to the black, it would be easier to show you here. We take the blacks and now it's showing you when you go like, okay, whoa, this is way too dark, all right? And the same with the blues like this. It's showing you again here that you cannot do this much. And I like this to just to be precise. So I often activate this and see like how far I can push the tones before I start to either clipping or blowing out the highlights. Now tip number four is something that I personally cannot live without when I'm editing photos. And that's for here, when you're in the tone curves, and you're moving around the tone curve if you want to be super precise. So without doing this and you move in tone curve, it can be a little bit hard being precise because it moves a little bit fast. But if you want to slow it down and make it so it's just moves slower and easier to be precise, then you can hold in Alt on your keyboard. Look what happens. It becomes super slow and it's very easy to be precise. So if you make another point here, hold in Alt, and now you can just do tiny micro movements and it's not like moving all, all around and like, hey, where, where did I go? Just slow it down, man, like this. We like that. Number three is down here in the HSL slider in the Mixer tab. And this is something that I just love about Lightroom. So you can, like, I like to have my view like this. Some of you will like to have seen just the hue, saturation, and then luminance. It's all up to you. But let's, for just uh, simplification, do the hue like this, all right? So let's say that we're working with um, the hue and I want to change the color of just his pants. A really nice thing I like to do is to go up here and press this pen tool. Now we can basically hover over any color you like and look what happens. Lightroom is showing you what colors are in it. So if you go here and then I like to just scroll on my mouse because I use the mouse and I scroll here. So if you scroll now, on here, it's gonna move just the colors that the pants are. And you can see that this like tiny bit of orange, but a lot of yellow. And this, you can be super precise. Let's say we wanna do the, we wanna change the hue a little bit here on this guy, and it's gonna change most of the blue, but also a little bit of the aqua. Same for the saturation. We wanna saturate the sky. You can just hover over the, like whatever color here, this guy, and it's gonna saturate that, you see? Very, very nice, and you can do the same for the Luminous. This little tool, the pen here, love it. So number six is something that is, in my mind, separates the professional from the amateur. So let's say that you're down here in detail and want to sharpen your photos. Most people will just go and tag up the sharpening slider and it will be okay with that. But what happens then is that you're sharpening the entire photo, and often with the background, you're introducing a whole lot of unwanted noise that you don't really maybe not want to have there. So what's a much better way to do is instead of sharpening the entire photo, let's say we take the sharpening up to to 70, then you can go down to mask here. And if you hold in alt on your keyboard and drag the masking slider, you're now just creating a mask and just sharpening what is white. So instead of sharpening the entire photo, you can just make want to sharpen the subject. Maybe you just want to sharpen it like this. So now just the outlines are sharp and the rest becomes a little bit more soft, but you may be, may, you're able to make the subject like stand more out from the photo. And this, my friends, when I learned this, it absolutely. <laughs> 
Now, number seven is something that is going to save you a whole lot of time. And uh, time saving is something that <laughs> at least us that have kids like. So in masks, there are a bunch of different things that you can do with the mask. And masks in Lightroom are so good. But one thing that you can do now is if you go down to object, you have two things that you can play with. Either this one, which is like a pen, or a one here that you can select. So now with this selected, the rectangle here, rectangle, the square, I meant, you can now drag this around whatever subject that you like and watch my Lightroom. In just a few seconds, Lightroom makes a perfect mask around your subject. Wow. Now, tip number eight is honestly so good that it feels at times that you're just cheating. It's just so, like, when you learn this, everything becomes so much simpler and faster. So look at this. In mask, when you're working with a person and you go mask, click here, you can select people, all right? So Lightroom can detect all the people you have. If you have multiple people, you can, like, it will detect that. So here I have my friend Oscar, and you click on Oscar like this, and you can then, not only you have a perfect mask around them, but you can also select what features, where do we want to have the mask? And even down here, if you just want to take the hair, the lips, the clothes, everything, ain't this like mind blowing to you? I, I Like, we just want to make the iris and pupils, boom, we create a mask, and now you can open up the exposure, making the eyes stand more out or whatever. This is magic. And you saw how many different masks you have. Easy, just click plus, click select people, and boom, you get a bunch of different masks made uh, for you. In just a second. All right, so tip or hack? Should we call it hack? <laughs> tip number nine is also like it's. I'm gonna say this every. I think all of these tips are sick. But look, look at this. So if you go down here to detail, just here, and the <laughs> detail, you do it like this. And if you click the noise like this, it will remove noise from your photos in a way that simply wasn't possible before. You see this? All this noise, boom, it's gone, and you can choose here the amount you want to and it just makes it's it's this feature is so good it's so much better than what you had before this AI defocus you just click enhance and watch Lightroom again do its magic and your feed photos like this is how you can also pump up your ISO in nighttime shot and even like you don't have to be stressed anymore in my opinion to pump up your ISO because the removing ISO and the digital nose nowadays it's just uh, simple like slicing a cake or a butter Slicing a butter, <laughs> that's what we say in Iceland. All right, so tip number 10 is something that I really like to do from time to time throughout my entire editing session. And that is to remove distraction and just see how the photo looks like without everything like distracting in between. And you can do this in a few different ways. One of them is to press L on your keyboard and you can see everything get a little bit darker. If you press L again, everything becomes really dark. And this is a nice little way to just look at the photo without everything, you know, distracting it. And this is where a person like Cash myself going like, oh, oh okay, I edited this little bit too much, you know? All right, so number 11 is something my good friend Victor taught me, who's a fantastic professional photographer, and it's this. So first thing that you can know is that you can actually change the background here. So when you're working a photo, if you right click on the background, you can change between white, light gray, medium gray, dark gray, or darker gray and black. I like by default to have it on medium gray, but before I export the photo, I like to do this. And this is what Victor taught me. So something strange happened to my audio there, so I'll have to explain this to you again. But what I wanna do before I export my photos is to take a look at the photo on a white background, like total white, and also on a total black background. And the reason I wanna do this is twofold. Number one, I don't know totally where my photo will be viewed at. Some people have black themes, some people have white theme on Instagram. And also, if it's a print, some people have white walls, some people have black walls. So I just wanna see how the photo looks on like when you are putting it on those type of background. Number two, sometimes when I view my photo against a total white background, I notice that the whites within my photo that I'm ending are a little bit dull and I'm actually able to push them up a little bit more and get more oomph in my photo. And vice versa when I view it against a black background, but then it's just the shadows and I might be able to push them a little bit more or if they're too dark. Tip number 12, so simple, but so good. Use it all the time. And that is when I've been editing photo for a little while, I like to press Y every now and then on a keyboard. It will instantly take up the before and after. And then you can see like, if you've edited it too much or like how, yeah, <laughs> what you've been doing, you know? And then number 30, my friends, this is how you can save your ton of time. So let's say that I've been editing or I have, I've been editing this photo and this is from one session and I have a bunch of photos from the same session that are all shot on a similar location at a similar time of the day. So what I can do, I can take this photo highlighted here and then I can 
hold and shift or just like select all the photos that I want. I want to select all of these photos. So I select all of these photos here. Then I press sync here and I choose what I want to sync, like what adjustments I want to do. I want to take all of these, like I want to have the details here. Now let this here, the transform, everything, baby. We want to do it like this. And then I press synchronize. And what Lightroom is doing now, it's pasting all of the adjustments that I made to this photo to these photos here. And you can see now that if you take a look at the other photos, they all look like very, very similar. And all I have to do now really is just to make a little few individual adjustments, maybe crop the photo a little bit, make that match and just do a few individual adjustments to each thing because each photo is a little bit unique. And boom, we have photos that look just the same. And this is like, this saves you a ton of time when you start doing this. Now, number 14 is something that keen eyes might have noticed that I've been like, I've been doing the entire time. And that is that I often like to create like go here and create a virtual copy. You see, these are the same photos. The reason I do this is that sometimes I want to edit a photo and I know that I want to have it on different platforms. So I want to make a few different edits. So what do you do? You basically click, uh, let's say you click, you click on it and then you go create virtual copy. You just click here and it will create another copy. And now this one you can edit in another style or do something different with it that you know is going to go on the website or this is going to go like in a book or this is going to go on, you know, social media. You understand what I'm trying to say. All right, so number 15, my friends, the last tip the last hack if you will is something that absolutely blew my mind when i learned it so you simply press n on your keyboard and now you can select a few photos and have a look at them side by side and you can do this to a few of them and this is such a nice tip my friends when you like are working with a set of photos and you want them all to look similar and now you can just visually see it like this and oh i i like this i uh, where was this when I started? Now, the thing though with photo editing is that there's a really fine line between making a good edit and a super bad edit. So all of these tips that I just showed you, they kind of become irrelevant if you are doing like one of these incredibly common editing mistakes right here.